How's it going everybody? It is Ethan and Encoder and welcome back to episode 19 of Let's Build Twitter. In this episode, we actually start taking a look at how we can make some custom user input. That way we can just use it around in all of our application. I also want to mention that if the audio gets kind of messed up at the end, I'm not really sure it happened. It might be out of sync, it might not. All I know is that whenever I was editing it, it looked like it was out of sync on the timeline, but on my mouth looked like it was okay. So hopefully everything turns out all right. Let's go ahead and hop into VS Code and we'll get right into it. Cool. So now we need to start making some general purpose text input fields. So things are going to start getting a little bit crazy at this point, And I'm not necessarily sure if things are going to stay the same. I might end up doing some styled components for the time being or not for the time being later on. So we'll see. Let's go ahead and make it so we can actually add some input fields. So inside of our components, I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder. And these will probably be shared. So I'm going to go ahead and say text input. And inside here, I'll go ahead and make a new file. I'm just going to call this text input.tsx. I don't think I do any CSS for the time being on this. The entire idea is just so we can get some user input in here. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And we'll close out of this. And we'll do RFRAFCE. I guess we only want RFACE or RFAC. I'm still getting used to the uh, hotkeys and such. This is, of course, a React dot function component. In this one, we are going to want a props interface. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say interface text input interface or text input props. And inside, we're going to have a name for this so we can kind of know the value coming out of it. We're going to have a label for this so we can add a label, which is a string, of course. We'll have an error message, which we will see later on. String. We'll have an on change, which will take in an react dot change event. Uh, and this is an HTML, um, I think input element, and this will be void. I did this wrong. And then we're going to have a couple optionals like max length, question mark. This will be a number. So how long might you want it? We're also going to have a optional validator that we'll take a look at later. This will take in a value string and kind of validate whether or not it is good. So Boolean. again, that will be optional. Let's go ahead and import all this stuff where we need it. So text input props. Again, what we might end up doing is adding onto this as we get going and as we need more. So don't be surprised if we modify this a little bit name label error message on change max length and validator for the time being we might not use some of those and now we need to go ahead and grab our state and our use effect so go ahead and import use state and use effect so now our state for now is going to be the value that we're inputting and any attributes that we want to set. I don't know if we need the attributes currently, um, but I'll add them just in case. Set input value. This is equal to use state. So I'm gonna take in a string and we're going to start out with an empty string. All right, so the attributes are going to be for like max length and stuff like that. I don't know if we have a max length Currently. So I'm going to ignore the max length for now in the attributes, but whenever we do need it, I might go through and change that. So I'm also going to go ahead and create a const update input. And this is going to take in that event that we passed it react dot change event with the HTML input element. 
And here we're going to say on change. We're going to pass that E. And we'll set and put value to E dot target dot value. Does not like this. Why do you not like this? What did I do wrong? E react dot change event react dot change event. I don't think we need this on change. I don't know why this is here. So I'm going to get rid of this. I don't think we need that. We just want to make sure that we do in fact change this. All right. So now we go ahead and make our div class name is equal to text input. And I'm going to call this, um, well, actually, no, we'll keep this for now, but this is probably going to get changed to a style div. Um, and we'll have a div with our span, which is a label. So the label that we pass in. And then we'll also have our inputs with the name equal to name on change is equal to input updated. Or update input, I mean. And then finally, we would pass in the attributes, but for now we're not going to. And I think the reason why we had this on change was we might need it for something else and it might help if i actually named on change right and now we can say on change e although i might change things up a get a bit and this is so we can pass props backwards um i may just do redux sooner rather than later and not deal with that so let's go ahead and add these text inputs into our form so let's go back into our modal registration modal step one or form one and let's import this text input import text input from here and now inside of here the first thing we want is an interface for our state so register or form one state this is going to take in a first name of type string a last name of type string a email of type string and our date of birth for now will just be a string we might change this i don't remember but the date of birth for the time being is going to be taken as a string and converted so let's go ahead and set up our state use state and we'll go ahead and set up the state. So we'll say const um, step one state set step one state. And then in here, we're going to say um, equal to use state. And this is going to take in that form one state. And for the time being, we're just going to set everything to empty string. So empty string, last name, empty string. This shouldn't be semicolons, should be commas for this part. Our email, again, will be empty string. And then our date of birth will also be an empty string. Cool. Now we need our update user. So up const update user will take in the e react dot change event html um, html input element on void we're going to say set step one state and we're going to do use a spread operator step one state and then e dot target dot name e dot target dot value so this will set the data for that specific person 
So now let's go ahead and add in the data and we can also add some print statements uh, just to kind of see what's going on inside here. So I'm going to pull in use effect for the time being. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to create a use effect right here. And we're just going to print out every time our step one state changes. So console.log will say state change colon or add in step one state just to take a look at what it looks like as we type in. And now we'll do some text inputs. Text input name equal to first name. Label will equal to first. Our error message will equal, and I might want to put these inside of curly braces just to be safe. I'm not sure if it's going to be finicky or not. So go ahead and put these in curly braces. Our error message will be, please enter your name. And then on change will obviously equal to update user. So there's our first text input. We need another text input for our last name. So this one will be last name. Label will be last. The error message will still be please enter your name. Again, it'll be update user. And then finally, we'll add one last one. This will be email. The label will be email. The error message will be please enter a valid email. And then finally, it'll be update user. So now if all went right, it's still not going to be styled very well. So we're going to have to deal with that. But if we go ahead and take a look at here, you can see we have first, last, and email as we expect. And if we go ahead and inspect in our console, it's, it changed the state a bunch of times because we refreshed. Um, so if I go ahead and clear this and I start writing unknown coder or unknown, we see state first name is unknown. If I put coder, we see last is coder. We put our email, uh, unknown coder at mail.com. We see that our email is unknown coder at mail.com. So now we can take in that user input. Of course, it's not styled or anything yet. We'll make it styled like Twitter, but for the time being, I just want to get to the point where we can actually get in user input and send a request over to the backend. Unfortunately, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, please sure leave a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.